Hey guys, it's Dave. I'm shooting a little video. Just as a big time wrestling fan, I've literally been watching since the early 90s, since I was a little wee little wrestling fan. And I just gotta talk about like one thing that's really been bugging me lately in WWE, especially like it's kind of a thing everywhere. But it's kinda like everybody in WWE looks very similar. And what I mean by that, like, when I was a kid, you had every kind of wrestler, every body size. And granted, I'm not saying, like, oh, it was better. But, like, what happened to the fat guy wrestler? Like, where's the Dusty Rhodes? And, like, a jovial big guy. The Mick Foley. Like, why is everybody effectively, like, a body wrestler? Like, there's Kevin Steen, but he doesn't really wrestle like a big guy. Bray Wyatt kind of but again he wrestles closer to like a bruiser style like a JBL than I would consider to be like a big guy style and like, we have nobody who's kind of filling in that viscera kind of just big monstrous guy like you could kind of say some of the Wyatts kind of fill that role but I'm just saying like I understand from a health perspective, like, you don't want a 600-pound guy who's just morbidly out of shape and, you know, it's doing damage. But just, like, a King Kong Bundy guy. Like, somebody who's just naturally big, wrestles a big guy style. Got that bruiser style. Because I think a lot of people are kind of foolish when they talk about work rate and stuff like that. Like, it kind of bugs me whenever I see... Like, Luke Harper, like, I'm a big fan of Luke Harper. I think that guy is really good. I think he's a great promo, Gary, in-ring worker. But I don't think he should be doing suicide dives. I think that's weird. Like, maybe if he saved him for, like, a big major match. Like, if he broke away from Bray Wyatt and wanted to do something by himself. Like, sure, he can throw in one or do some stuff. Like, I like big guy style for big guys. Like, they don't need to do... A whole butt ton of crazy top rope stuff. And that's kind of become like a major thing. Like, when every time I see Big E do the spear through the ropes and just smash into the ground, I'm like, he doesn't need to do that. Like, that's wrestle the big guy style. Push him against that, that turnbuckle and just hold him there. Like, I think that's why I'm such a big fan of Lucha Underground as opposed to, like, ROH or New Japan. Like, I watch them every once in a while, like, when I hear a really cool match. I'll search out some of the more obscure uh, indies, like, when I hear, like, a really cool thing, like a PWG, uh, stuff like that. Like, I'll go and check them out, but, like, I'm a big fan of Lucha Underground. And I think it's because they kind of have a style... That fits them. And granted, a lot of guys there are kind of working a Lucha Libre style. Which, it's Lucha Underground, it's going to happen. But then you have guys like Ezekiel Jackson. Like, I know a lot of people are probably not going to like my opinion on it. I think he does perfectly fine. He's wrestling a big guy style. There, If you had a big guy who wrestles like everybody else, how does he lose? Like, a serious question. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, fuck Kevin Nash's opinion on the Vanilla Midgets. But, like, the reason somebody can beat the big show in WWE is because he wrestles slow and lumbering. If Big Show was just sprinting and, like, held you in the corner and just beat the bejesus out of you. Unless you're fucking John Cena and you're, like, 800 pounds of muscle and you're just like... <laughs> like, how, how do you fight... How do you combat the big show? It would be like him and Brock Lesnar handing the belt back and forth until they both retire. Like, so you got to do stuff with, like, a big guy. Like, I know a lot of people are already looking at um, Braun Strowman, and they're like, oh, I don't know. I, I think he's kind of limited in the ring. I'm like, he's a fucking ginormous power lifter. All he needs to do is do bear hugs face squeezes and shit like that like that's what i want him to do you know if he wants to add some more shit to his arsenal go for it but don't add small guy shit it's weird i don't like it i know a lot of people are like oh well i saw this move in roh where they fucking 
did a million flips and landed and stomped him on the side of the head and then he got a two count. Like, how can anything be a finisher if that's not going to end a match? If you do a pedigree off the top rope and you don't win the match, you've ruined the match. Like, nothing is going to beat that move. And I think that's, like, a major issue that's starting to kind of leak into WWE is John Cena should not do Hurricane Rana's. He shouldn't do that fucking janky-ass springboard stunner shit. He's a big guy. If he wants to add new moves, military press. That's a good one. Pick him up, throw him on their fucking head. <laughs> that should be John Cena's move. Fuck you, get out of my ring. Like, th those are the kind of moves. Like, yes, it's impressive every once in a while to see a big guy throw in something. And, like, it can be fun. I'm not saying, like, never do it, but when John Cena was doing a Hurricane Rana, like, every other week on TV, it was like... And that's another major issue I have, is, like, the top guys. Like, what is Roman Reigns' weakness? Stone Cold had a weakness. He was a brawler. So you'd see like the heels that would try to work a technical style to ground him. Not let him throw any strikes in. Bret Hart would ground him. Work his submission game. Triple H. He'd keep moving. Getting all those big clotheslines, the running knees and stuff. The Rock was more athletic than Stone Cold. He had a legitimate weakness and he had to overcome it. What is Roman Reigns' weakness? No one out-wrestles him. He's the toughest fucker ever. He can get hit with a billion chairs. And a fucking chair factory can land on him. Like, he can beat four guys. Like, he needs a legitimate weakness. Or nobody gives a flying fuck about him. Like, Dean Ambrose. He's a striker. You should have your heels. Like, let's say... Rusev. Let's just use him for an example. Because I think that guy is pretty cool. I'm liking a lot of what he's doing. If you want Dean Ambrose to be a striker but he's got to go against another guy who's a striker who is larger, you have to do something with it. You have to do hit and run tactics. You've just got to tell a story that's a legitimate story. You can't just be like, oh, Dean Ambrose just fucking walks over him. I will why? I'm not trying to be like an asshole here, but if you have one guy like Rusev who is built like a small car and Dean Ambrose who is built like the toughest guy in a random bar <laughs> like Rusev should literally just shit kick him unless there's something Dean Ambrose is bringing to the table that's where I like some of the other shit he does where he's jumping off the top rope he's adding other shit into his like more base striking stuff so like that's a big thing I think you gotta work on is just Give your faces weaknesses, or your heels look like fucking idiots. Like, there's no reason anybody ever should beat up four guys. I didn't like it in the Attitude Era when Stone Cold did it. Didn't like when Cena does it. I don't like when Hulk Hogan used to do it. Like The one good thing I will say going on in WWE is the idea of factions returning. Because it always bugged me when, like... Cena would get beat down in, like, random good guy wrestlers that never talked to Cena before. Would just be like, oh, we're going to come protect you, Cena. Apparently we're friends now. Like, thanks, Dolph Ziggler. Totally not weird. I'm sleeping with your ex-girlfriend. Like, we never talk and you tend to shit on me in all your podcasts, but whatever. We're friends now. So, Yeah. Bring back diverse body types. I want to see some big guy wrestlers doing big guy stuff. I want to see less of just unstoppable characters. Like give characters niches. Oh, last thing before I go. God damn it, not every heel needs to be a coward. I hate that in WWE. It's the stupidest shit. Like, if there's why is Seamus all of a sudden a coward? Like, he's a bully. If anything, you could kind of make him stupid and bullish. He doesn't need to be a coward. Why is Rusev all of a sudden a coward? Why is... Like, Bad News Bear? Sure. Like, you need to come up with a reason these characters are bad other than they're a coward. 
<coughs> like, I like the cowardly heel. Like, it works for characters. Like, Miz being a perfect example. He makes it work really well with his character. Like, he is conceited, but at the same time, he's smart enough to know his own limits. So he'll run, run his mouth past where his ass can cash it. So he'll turn into a heel, he'll do heelish things. Or Seth Rollins, where he seemed like he was all over the fucking place at times, but I didn't like him being a cowardly heel. Like, he should have been a deluded heel, where he believes he's better than everybody else. And I would like to see some Shades of Grey heels. I think Rusev could be a really good one. I would bring back something along the lines of the Kurt Angle beat the clock challenge for Rusev. Like, once you break up this fucking feed us to Roman Reigns gimmick and you need to rebuild Rusev's credibility. And that could be a good way to bring in a Sami Zayn or whoever the hell you want to bring in. He comes out, local talent. He says, you have two minutes. If you can survive against Rusev for two minutes, you know, you win a kiss from Lana or whatever. So you get all, like, these local talents that come out there and they're all like, oh, shucks, Lana. Rusev just fucking eats them alive. He just stomps on their head until they pass out. He just destroys them with big guy moves. And then you could bring in somebody like a Sami Zayn, and then he's supposed to get his kiss from Lana on the cheek, and then Rusev fucking pops up and low blows him, or whatever you want to do. And like you could use that as a storyline. Like Rusev could just be a fucking monster heel. Like that is a legitimate heel. He doesn't need to be a coward on top of it. He doesn't need Lana to cheat for him. Like his his heat should literally be, holy shit, that big scary fucker gets to go home and pound the hell out of that sexy girl. Fuck that guy. <laughs> like, that that should be all of his heat. Like, holy shit, she's super hot. That guy's with her? Fuck that guy. <laughs> and he's just like, haha, skinny American dicks can't pleasure her. I eat a dick, everyone. <laughs> like, that should be all of Rusev's heat. Just, she's pretty, I'm better than you, let's fight. Shit, he's tough. <laughs> And I'd also like Rusev to go back to the not wearing shoes gimmick. I liked it. I mean, if it's a reason, like, he needs to tape his ankle or whatever, I'm cool with him having to wear the shoes. But I just thought he looked cool without him. When he just had, like, the taped up ankle look, like, I thought that was cool. I mean, if it's a health reason, definitely I'm pro keeping him healthy over a look thing. But if it's not, um, I don't know if there's any other thoughts. I guess one last one and then we'll wrap up this video. If you're over 50 years old and you're still wrestling, put the new guy over. That is all. I'm Dave. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more wrestling chat, please leave us a like or a comment or both if you're particularly nice. And until next time, that's it. I'll come with a catchphrase eventually. Later, guys.